Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3, where last time Emir Biscuit took another big, bold, ambitious step forward as he formed the Dalaxian culture, and it was a very, very big moment for all the people of our realm, they diverged away from the Bedouin culture that they'd been part of for many, many years, many centuries I imagine, but they did it because they'd noticed that they do things a little bit differently now, they've got their own local dialects and customs and traditions and all that kind of stuff, and so a new culture was born to best reflect those differences that they now have with the Bedouins. And it's all very exciting. I do like the fact that we have our own culture. It's very organised, is Dalaxian. They love books and tables and lists and admin and bureaucracy and all that kind of stuff. It's a culture very much built in the image of a mere biscuit. So hopefully we will see Dalaxian spreading across the realm very soon. I think right now it's only in Dalak itself, but I think we are trying to kind of promote it over there in Mecca as well. I think our steward is on that. Yeah, there we go. How long is that going to take now? Another four years. It's very, very, very slow going to get a new culture in. But there we go. We're working on it and it's absolutely fine. And then, of course, we've got to work on down here as well once Mecca is converted over. It's going to take a long time. It's going to take a long, long time to promote the Dalaxian culture amongst all of our people, but we will get there. You have made a start, we'll just keep working at it, and I'm sure it'll all be fine. However, right now, it's all eyes on Cake and his wife Baha. Because as it stands right now, Cake, our player heir, doesn't have a son to continue the proper succession of the dynasty. But Baha, Cake's wife, there she is. She is very, very heavily pregnant. She has been with a child for eight months. So fingers crossed that this is a boy. Because if not, we are going to have ourselves a bit of a succession crisis on our hands, which is not what we want at all. So let's get time ticking on, shall we? So eight months, it's not going to take long. It is not going to take long at all. Come on, please, please have a son. Oh, crikey, a thing has popped up. Um, okay, following the death sentence of a lowly thief, I asked my granddaughter, Sharara, is that how you pronounce that? Uh, what she thought. That is Cake's youngest. Okay, so our granddaughter. She expressed doubts about whether any god could want a realm to be ruled by such a harsh law. Okay, so remind me, what is she looking at? She is going down a learning education. Okay, that seems fair. And um, okay, so what are we talking about here? So a death sentence of a lowly thief. Do not expect to see Alice justice. She keeps the trait cynical. So intrigue and learning goes up. However, we have just done our pilgrimage. We just did our, um, you know, we completed the Hajj. So I wonder if we would go down this route. Um, she must be taught the proper execution of the law. And now again, we are just we're just, that is a very sort of, yeah, a very just thing to do. We would probably go down that route. Or this is a lesson of moderation in all things. That means she loses cynical, but she gets temperate. I think, I think we'd make her just. I think that is what we do because we are just and we couldn't help but pass that on to her. We kind of go, ah, well, hang on a minute. You must be taught the proper execution of the law. Just to, you know, make sure that she understands how the law works and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah. I think will make her lose cynical, which isn't too bad. It's not too bad in terms of a learning education, but I think we would make her just because that's how we think about things. So um, yeah, it is going to cause us to have a little bit of a breakdown. We have been overwhelmed by stress. Right. Okay. Dark thoughts. Oh dear. Oh dear me. Right. Okay. So the sting of the lash, we can either pick up the flagellant uh, trade, which is never good because also that comes with wounded, which gives us a severe health penalty. Uh, we could donate to charity. We could become improvident. We could therefore lose 370 gold. We don't have 370 of the monies right now, or we lose some stress, or I must be strong and resist these impulses. Okay, so we gain another 45 stress. Hang on, what are we on right now? Uh, we're on 152. That will push us up almost up to stress level two out of three. Not quite, though. Um, I don't think, I don't think he would take to the, he wouldn't take to the lash. He wouldn't start injuring himself. I just don't think that's within his nature. I don't think he would do that. He's, you know, he's clever and wise and such like. He's not going to start sort of whacking himself with a kind of, you know, whatever that is, like a flaily thing. Um, would he give to charity? Would he start giving to charity and become improvident? So diplomacy goes up, but monthly income comes down. But I don't think he would because he's a fortune builder. He likes, you know, he's, he's not obsessed with money like his dad was, but he understands the value of money and how that works in building up a realm. So I don't know if he would go down that route. I think maybe, 
given his experience and his wisdom and his advanced years, he's just gonna, yeah, you know, he's just gonna sort of you know, grit his teeth and bear it, be strong and resist these impulses. I don't think he'd go for any of those two things there. I think other options he might go for, but not these two. So I think we're going to be strong and we're going to resist these impulses. We are very, very near to stress level two, which isn't wonderful, but you know what? We'll deal with it when it happens. Oh, and joy of joys, Bahar and Cake have had a son. Look at that. We have a grandson. That is wonderful. To carry on the family name and all that stuff. That is very good. That is wonderful. I was expecting a little sort of pop-up to appear to say, hooray, a child has been born. But of course, they're not in our court. They're in their own court, so we don't get that notification. So a little bit late. We kind of missed your actual you know, proper real birthday. You were born on the 16th of April in 1171. So we missed it by, you know, a couple of months, but that's okay. And just to, you know, add the cherry onto the we've avoided a big old succession crisis cake, Faddle here is handsome and intelligent, which is just absolutely wonderful. So, I mean, diplomacy goes up, fertility goes up, attraction opinion goes up. That's wonderful to have. And he's intelligent. So he gets plus three to all of his skills and he gets a monthly lifestyle experience bonus of plus 20%. And then if you think about it, our culture here, because we're bureaucratic, we also get monthly lifestyle experience up by 5%. So he's going to get 5% from that, plus he's going to get, um, hang on a minute, go into there, he's going to get another 20% from that. So he's going to get 25% boost to his monthly lifestyle experience. He's going to pick up so many skills. That is wonderful stuff. Welcome to the world, Faddle, I assume pronounce it, or Fardle, possibly. I don't really care. Welcome. Welcome, whatever your name is. You are very, very welcome indeed. It, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful moment. It's a pleasure to meet you. Right, now, can we offer guardianship? Because we want to make sure that you are being brought up in the correct way. Hang on a second. Hang on. Where are we and who are our current wards? So, yeah, so Sharara, who is our granddaughter, so that's Cake's second daughter, who we just sort of looked at with that decision thing. And then we've got Bayan, who is our daughter, so our newest child. Um, I think, I think possibly we stop being your guardian and then we become Faddle guardian. OK, so let's stop being your guardian. So remove guardian. So we'll stand down a bit so you can go back to dad's court. OK, and we will then become your guardian. Offer guardianship. We will do it. So we can have a little bit of control over what happens to um, what happens to Faddle here. I need to know how to pronounce that. I mean, is it Faddle or is it Fardle? I, I'm going to say Faddle, I think, because that seems to make sense. But there we go. They will accept because they've got a plus 369 modifier to it. So there we go. Yeah, he's going to come to our court as well. Yeah, absolutely. Come over to our court, Faddle. This is wonderful stuff. This is very good. OK, so now we are raising Faddle. So we get to do all of the choice things. And of course, we're very, very clever. We're very, very good. So hopefully, if we can stick around for a few more years, young Faddle should get a very, very good education. Oh, that's worked out very well. And we're pretty good. We have many, many good stats going on. I mean, that's very impressive for somebody of 69 years of age. Look at all these. OK, wonderful stuff. That's worked out very well indeed. We do need to bring our stress down a little bit. We do need to work on that, possibly. I don't really want it to go into stress level two. How about we've got 256 money? Could we, we could possibly call a hunt or we could, we could seclude ourselves because we haven't done that in a while. And maybe, you know, we've had a terrible time at court. We've had to see lots of people. It's been very busy and very involved. Maybe we just want to kind of, you know, go and seclude ourselves away for a while just to get away from things. We've got a busy time. So let's do that, possibly, because that does mean that we um, we do lose a little bit of stress. It costs us 150 prestige. We have much in the way of prestige. So let's just go and sort of hide ourselves away a little bit. I shut the door behind me and take one step into the quiet room. I breathe in deeply and out. <sighs> I've given the servant's order to not let anyone disturb me, no matter what happens. As my shoulders relax, I know that this is exactly what I needed. OK, so we can do that because we are reclusive. We're going to spend 150 of our prestige and we lose 29 stress. That's OK. It could be better, but it could be significantly worse. So, OK, we've brought that down a teeny tiny bit. 
I don't think that's going to be quite enough. But there we go. That's where we are with stress. We're not quite as stressed as we were. Over here in Mecca, can we do any more building work just to make things a little bit better around the place? I mean, how about over there? We can do a few more upgrades now because this is a level two temple, which is very good. And some prayer holes have been constructed over there. Oh, that's well timed. That comes in quite nicely. OK, let's get something else built over here, possibly. Let's get another thing set up. I mean, what did they give us? They give us a little bit of money to the prayer holes and control growth up as well, which is very handy. So how about now? How about a camelry? They're very handy indeed. We like those. They could be quite handy around the temple to help, you know, move things around and all that kind of stuff. We get some levies. We get an extra knight, which is handy. And our cavalry are a little bit improved. Yeah, OK, that's 112 money. So we'll have a camelry just there, I think. And then over here, oh, we can't upgrade anything anymore because we don't have the money. Over there, can't do that. Over here, ah, we could upgrade our desert agriculture. We could take it from trading posts and we could add some weavers. OK, so what does that do? An extra 0.1 tax per month and light cavalry toughness goes up. I don't know if we have much in the way of light cavalry. I don't think we really do. I think let's run time on a little bit. Let's see if we can't just get enough money to upgrade something over here, either the port or the fields or the monastery, sort of, yeah, the schools over there. It'd be quite nice if we could do that because they seem quite good. I mean, how about... How about we upgrade, I don't know, the port over here. 225 money. There we go. They're all available now, which is good. So tax goes up from 0.5 to 0.7 and development growth goes up even more, which is very, very important. Yeah, OK, let's upgrade the trade port over there because that seems like a logical thing to do. Um, and we're still earning quite a lot of money. The money is tumbling in very nicely. So, um, yeah, let's just run time on, bring money in, get more money to spend on shiny new things. Also, how long is it going to take? until our new duchy building is ready. Let's have a quick look. 15 months until the Royal Forest, the Royal Bernard Forests are ready. Okay, yep, yeah, that is wonderful as well. 14 months now, that's going to be huge. That's going to bring in 0.8 tax per month. That is very, very big indeed. Okay, right, there we go. Let's just keep time ticking on and let's bring in all the lovely money. Okay, we've swayed that chap and we can pick another perk, which is wonderful. Okay, we shall have mental resilience, please. So time between mental breaks plus three years. Oh no, oh no, hang on a minute, pause time. We've lost our Seneschal because Vali there died of old age. Okay, right, yeah, we need to reappoint that because they're really good. The Seneschals are very, very good. Um, okay, I mean, our granddaughter can do it. Both of our granddaughters are very good at that job. They're both very organised. Um, they're both quite similar in terms of their skill sets and such like, but um, I don't know, who do we pick? Are you both... Hang on, who are, who are you from? You are... your Biscuit's daughter. Okay, so your Biscuit's daughter is hanging around... No, not Biscuit. Brainy's daughter. So your Brainy's daughter hanging around at court. And you are... who are you? Are your Brainy's other daughter just hanging around at court? And you have a child. You have a, you've got a son. So we have a great grandson who is a genius. This is wonderful stuff. Well done. And they are at our court. That is very exciting. OK, um, let's keep you here. Let's keep you in our court, I think. So um, hang on, aren't you? Do you do something else? Uh, no, Brainy does the tutoring. OK, right. Hang on a second. So let's get you into that position. So control growth across all of our places is going to go up by 0 0.4 per month. That is very good. Yeah. OK, you can have that job. You can be our seneschal. I mean, with our huge piles of money, do we want to employ somebody else? Do we want to get another position? I mean, do we need bodyguards, personal champions? Um, oh, the rest of these are not available. Ah, because I imagine we need to have a royal court for all these things. I mean, how's... We haven't got an antiquarian. How is... How's all of our stuff? How are all of our items? Are they looking okay? Um, I mean, we have got 122 money. Do we want to go and just kind of, you know, spend a little bit of cash on fixing these. That's going to cost 25 to give us, a, you know, repair that book up to 60 years. There's 42 years left in these, though. 
I think we keep the money for now. Let's keep the money for now and spend it on, you know, other more interesting things than just repairing up a little sort of, you know, book or whatever. Oh, Chappie Across the Sea has called upon our aid again. Okay, and you know what? We will come and help you because you've helped us out many times. I mean, we were very, very instrumental in the last fight you called us into because, uh, yeah, we captured the, you know, the leader of the opposition and that was it. That was kind of the war over. We kind of turned up. We didn't even siege one place, I don't think. I think we were mid-sieging. Their troops kind of staggered toward us, having lost another fight. And then we had a fight with them, and then that was it. But yeah, okay, we shall come and help you. So it's a holy war for the Raj of Gandhara as an attacker. Okay, so Chappie here is getting a bit fighty. Wasn't the other one an attacky war as well? He's getting a bit fighty in his old age. But okie doke. Yeah, there we go. We shall come and help you. Where do we need to go exactly? So we're going... Uh, is that it? Yes, that's it just there, isn't it? So the, for the Raj of Gandhar, Gandhara, which is there, because that's the light bit, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so that's Raja Gunga's realm. So that's you. Yes, yeah, so it's that bit over there. It's a little bit of a trek. We've got to do quite a bit of walking to get inland to reach that. But do you know what? It's fine. It's okay. Uh, we have got a good bit of money set aside. So, hang on, is it worth just ticking over until the next month? So we've got an extra 25.5 money just in the bank to keep our troops supported whilst they're out and about. Because they might be out for quite a long time. Right, 199 money. Right, let's raise all our armies and let's hold control whilst we do so to make sure they all kind of raise in the same place. There we go. Right, so you lot all raise. Might take a little while to get you all in because there's quite a few of you now. Six and a half thousand people. It just seems weird that, you know, not that long ago when Samira was in charge, we had 350 people. And now six and a half thousand. That is very good. Right. And then we just need to kind of traipse all the way over here. It's going to take us absolutely ages to get here, isn't it? It's going to take so long to get to the eight months it's going to take. My goodness me. Okay, do you know what? Fine. Get started. You sort of trudge over there. It's going to take out. I'm looking at the wrong place. It's going to take ages. So you need to get on a boat and then do some sailing, do some you know, lovely boaty action. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of you know, trudge through this part of the world. Unfamiliar with this, but it's fine. Yeah, we'll get over there and then we'll see what the state of things are when we get over here. I mean, it looks like, hang on, hang on. It looks like they should be okay. They've got about 6,800 people in total. You've got 18,000, although we are contributing a third of that. I think they might be okay without us. I think they will muddle through until we get there. Let's put it that way. And yeah, we're losing 2.3 gold per month because we have got quite a lot of men-at-arms troops. So yeah, it'd be handy if those things could... Oh, this is a bit of a problem. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Uh, it'd be handy if those things could upgrade. So I think that might offset our sort of losses there. Um, okay, so Chappie here, who we... Who's married to... Who's married to you? It's Smarty, isn't it? Okay, so Smarty is married to this chappy here. Um, he's saying, can you please come and help? Because he's having a bit of a fight. Um, okay, we'll try our best. We are engaged in another military conflict over in this part of the world. It might take us a while to get there. If you could hold on for a bit, that'd, that'd be really helpful. But yeah, we've kind of, you know, we've dedicated our troops elsewhere right now. We will come and help, though. I do promise <laughs> it just might take a while. But hang on, here we go. We're doing some you know, top level boating. Let's get over here. And then, yeah, we'll just sort of wander up into that part of the world. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. We've received the message of doom. I can feel it in my very bones. Azrael will come for me soon. Like an old friend, he is patiently waiting to receive me. Oh, dear. I will be dead Within a year. Okay, pause time for a second. Hang on a second. There we go. We've got it. So we know now that we are dying. Although normally we get a little terrifying notification up here with a skull on it saying you are dying. Is it just because we have that perk that we don't get the terrifying skull anymore? So we know that Amir Biscuit has less than a year left in him. That is very, very sad. Oh, Amir Biscuit, what are we going to do without you? Um, okay. Right, well, there we go. We can't do anything about it right now. We just have to kind of you know, keep time ticking on. Um, I mean, do, I was going to say, let's make the most of his um, of his amazing kind of, you know, architecture skills by building one last thing at, you know, cut price, because he could do that because he's good at building stuff cheaper and quicker. But I don't think we can. 
I don't think we have enough money left. If we spend the money on that, we're going to run out of money and that's going to be a bad thing. Um, okay, well, the end is coming to Biscuit. We shall just have to wait and see when that happens. It's going to be a very sad day. Oh, and look at that. Our trade port has been constructed over there in that place in Mecca, in Rabbi, possibly, or Rabbi, maybe just there. And that's given us plus 4.3 money. So we're going for, went from losing 2.3, was it, to now gaining 4.3, even though all of our troops are raised. Oh, hang on a second, hang on. The chappy who called the war, it's the person that we were allied to, has now... Yeah, look at that, he's died. He's died of old age, and I assume that's his son who's taken over. Uh, but now our alliance with them has expired. Uh, we are at war, we're not war with them, we're at war, yeah, we're fighting alongside them but we no longer have the alliance with them, I don't think. Oh, no, we are. We're allied to... Oh, no, we are allied to you. Oh, okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. The alliance is still holding. Okay, that's good. A stone of glass. As I struggle to make out the tiny letters on the scroll before me, I feel a headache building once again. Why do scribes insist on writing such small symbols? I squint and try again. Nothing short of a miracle. With the aid of a stone of glass, even old men struggling with bad eyesight could read with ease. Didn't we do this already? Didn't we do this already? Or am I thinking to a previous run? I, I can't quite recall. Um, okay, so we can ask. We can ask him for assistance. We can spend a big chunk of money that we don't have on buying a big, essentially a magnifying glass. Or we can sell everything which is impossible to read. I don't think we do that because we're ambitious. We would want to read this stuff. However, I think we would be aware of our own impending demise. And I think we wouldn't want to plunge our our realm into bankruptcy that would be silly so i think we just ask we just ask our our mufti for help there we just say hey can you please help out 300 learning lifestyle and um yeah he gets a hook on us but i mean if we're going to pass away soon anyway then that's not so bad so do you know what yeah please help us out that's going to be handy thank you and we're very slowly but very surely getting toward another perk in the medicine tree will we get there however I doubt it. I don't think we'll get to that point. But do you know what? Never mind. We'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe Biscuit is a little bit more resilient than I'm giving him credit for. I do not know. Okay, we've arrived in this part of the world. So I think let's go up and help out. I mean, yeah, can we siege that place? Can we go to just there and siege that? And then there's a load of troops over there to deal with any fighting. Oh, we finished the Royal Forest. Oh, we finished the forest. That is really good. I'm glad Biscuit got to see the duchy building being complete. And yeah, he can go and officially open the Royal Bernard Forest. That's very good. Okay, there you go, Biscuit. One last little sort of wonderful thing you got done there. You've completed our very first duchy building. And it's there. You can go walk around it. You can go in and, you know, get some herbs from there and enjoy that. Do a last bit of herbalism before you pass away, very sadly. Okay, there we go. Let's run time on a little bit more. Yes, yeah, so if we can siege this place... We can siege that. That's going to be helpful. So, yeah, what's that? Five months. I mean, I'm not sure Biscuit will see the end of this, but okie doke. It's going very well, this war. It's going very well. I can't see any enemy troops anywhere. Where are they? Do they have any troops? I think possibly this person's been let down by his allies because they're not doing anything. <gasps> and we've... Oh, hang, oh, okay. Hang on a minute. Th hang on. Pause time. Pause time. That war is complete. Okay, so that war is done. That is very good indeed. We've won that war. Hooray, we've helped out a bit. Um, is that the one we're in now? I'm not entirely sure. Or is that the other one? That was... Oh, that was the one that we said we'd take part in and then didn't take part in. But that's all been sorted. Hooray, right, good. Uh, this war is still ongoing, but not for very long, I don't think. However, I did notice at the top there that it told us that we have uh, researched heraldry. We got there. Oh, Biscuit, you've done that as well. Another parting gift. You constructed a fancy royal reserve and you've unlocked the secrets of heraldry, which is going to be really, really useful. I mean, OK, where do we go next? What do we focus on next? What would be a very Biscuit thing to try and research in his final years? Urbanisation is nearly complete. It would sort of make sense to try and finish that off, wouldn't it? That would kind of be a very logical thing. And I think he would quite like that you know, to tick another box and say, yep, we've completed another techie thing. Hooray. So yeah, let's go toward urbanization. So three years until we complete that. I don't think you'll see the end of that biscuit, but you know what? You make a bit of a dent in the progress. That'd be very handy. Right. And then over here, 
Right, we've completed sieging that place. I mean, I think they've got this, they've kind of got this sorted, but we'll come over here and help out anyway. We'll pop over to here and just, you know, we'll just chuck a few more troops in. Oh, they've just cleared off. They've just abandoned that siege entirely. That's a bit of a shame. Um, oh, okay, bleeding out. I am inspecting the barracks infirmary when a severely injured soldier is brought in. He is losing too much blood. Where is the physician? Okay, so we don't know where that person is. I still can't say her name, where the physician is. Okay. So we have to do this. Suddenly, as if you stepped out of thin air, my son and heir, Shake Cake, is at my side. He rolls up his sleeves and looks at me. Okay, let's work together and do this. So hand me the tourniquet. Um, yeah, so we get a bit of lifestyle experience. We get a strong hook and Chappie joins us. Or we can just tell, we can tell Shake Cake to clear off. I don't think we would do that. I know we're ambitious, but we are, we're, we're friends with him. We're his friend and he's our son and we get on. And I think we'd be aware of our current sort of position and we want a little bit of help or just let him bleed to death. I don't think we'd do that because that's not a very, yeah, there you go. It's not a very just thing to do. Um, yeah, let's just, let's just get Cake to help us. That makes sense. And okay, how was it? Ah, he's alive. He has survived. And are you good? No, you're terrible. Okay. I mean, you can hang around for a bit and then you can clear off if you like to. But I mean, yeah, you're, you have no intrigue. You have an intrigue of zero. You don't know what sneaking around is. Or you've never told a lie before. Okay, right, yeah, not you. <laughs> you can hang around for a bit, but yeah, we saved you. And that's good. That's a very impressive thing. But yeah, you can leave whenever you like. It's fine. I could not have done it without you. That's all very exciting. Right, here we go. Five months to siege this place. Is it going to happen? Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, wife tending wounds. Mansur al Riyadh. Uh, is receiving some attentive care from our wife. Okay. <laughs> do we do we need to worry about this? Joe, you know it's fine. You, you carry on doing that if you want to. You've got an amazing name. Uh, you carry on doing that. It's okay. A prisoner has been taken in the siege. Is it a prisoner worth anything? No, it's not. Okay. Can we get a little bit of money for you? We can get all of 10 money. Do you know what? Why not? That'll do. It's better than no money at all. Um, I'm thinking... We're earning 5.7 money per turn. We've got 223 money right now. Is it worth building one last thing with uh, with uh, Biscuit's amazing architecture skill just to get it at the lowest cost we can get it? I think it might be. So over here... Ah, now this is quite interesting. Do we improve? I'm not so bothered about improving the watchtowers. What does that give us? An extra bit of fort level garrison goes up although if we do get sieged that is quite useful and it is the one thing we have over here in Delac that is at tier one and it will keep the capital of all of our realm a bit safer fort level goes up defenders get more of an advantage so yeah it does make us a bit fighter and the garrison gets bigger as well do you know what let's do that one last kind of building come on biscuit you and me let's press this button 191 money going that way wonderful stuff okay we're a bit short of money now but i'm sure it's fine right okay back to over here we go and there we go there we go it was indeed his last act to just you know commit the final bit of money we needed to get the little you know those watchtowers upgraded to whatever they upgrade to and that was it emir biscuit has passed on my goodness me what a character Amir Biscuit was. He was incredible. Amir Biscuit, of the lovely people Emirate, has passed on to eternity at 71 years of age. He died of old age. Known to be a respected scholar, he spent most of his days studying in his library, rarely leaving his castle. Absolutely, that sums him up very nicely. Amir Cake ascends to the throne. He's no longer Shake Cake, it's Amir Cake. Fair and just in all things, many hope that he will handle any conflicts with grace. Okay. There we go. So it says up here, we've lost no titles because uh, Cake was our only son. So we've, we're basically picking up where we left off. And there we go. We now have ourselves a scroll bar on the lineage thing. Samira, Bernard, Biscuit in charge for 38 years. Not quite beating Samira's 51, but she did start very young. Um, and then, yeah, over to Amir Cake.
However, right now, it's time to bid a very, very sad farewell to Amir Biscuit. And you know what? He's been fantastic. He's done so much stuff for the realm, driven by his ambition. He's made such a huge difference. When he started his reign, the shadow of the bullying Abyssinians did loom large over him. But over time, he dealt with that. And how? My goodness me. He took the fight to them and he reclaimed the lands that he'd seen his father powerless to defend. He reunited the Duchy of Delax. And of course, he also oversaw the the end of the reign of the Danakils, which was wonderful, avenging just about 100 years of raiding and general annoyance. He oversaw a load of development around the realm. He used his architecture knowledge to build an awful lot of new buildings. He upgraded holdings. He built our first duchy building. He also improved the army, so we now have an awful lot of properly trained soldiers at our disposal, which is no bad thing. As time went by, he turned from administration to knowledge and became incredibly, incredibly clever. He was a wise man, a herbalist, a scholar. He was a genius, surely one of the brightest people in the world. And then he created the Dalaxian culture. He acknowledged that we'd become different enough from the Bedouins that it needed officially recognising, and so a new culture was born, a bureaucratic culture, just like Biscuit himself, and he used that new culture to try to unlock new tech as best he could in the time that he had left, which wasn't very long, unfortunately. And of course, what might well be his defining moment of many, many wonderful moments, he took control of Mecca, which absolutely transformed things for the loveliest people. More money came in, we had more troops, and of course, we had recognition for from around the world that we were the ones looking after the holiest of all the places in Islam, which was a huge moment indeed. So he's done many, many wonderful, brilliant things as Biscuit. He's been absolutely incredible. I think he's been one of the most interesting characters that we've played as in Crusader Kings 3. And let's not forget, he was also wearing a glorious hat. He had a wonderful hat on, did Biscuit. And so I think we should remember him as Biscuit the Brilliant, because he has been nothing short of brilliant. But alas, his time is over, Biscuit has passed away, and now Cake is in charge. So here we go, let's join Amir Cake. Okay, so we have all that new character stuff to do, and I can't help but notice that over here, we can't have anywhere near the amount of holdings that Dad had. Because yeah, Biscuit was an administrator, so he had perks that many could hold more holdings himself. But as we can see, poor Cake here has got to sort of trim down his holdings from 12 that we have right now down to six. Oh my goodness me, that could be very tricky indeed. Also, we need to do all the other stuff as well. We need to check the council and check our lifestyle. Hang on, right, so let's have a look at you. So how are we looking? We are not too bad. So Cake is okay. However, Cake is the first character that we've played in this run that is not a steward. Cake is a diplomat, which is very interesting indeed. So diplomacy of 22, We've got a Marshal of 13, which is not too bad, a Stewardship of 12, which is you know, okay, Intrigue of 6, which is fairly rubbish, and a Learning of 17. So, you know, taking after Dad, you're very clever there, that's very good. Can't do any fighting, but that's okay. And you're intelligent. Ah, you've, you've been on the Hajj already. Okay, so you completed that. And you've got the August trait, which is very, very good. I do like that one. I'm glad you've gone down that route. Um, okay, no negative traits. Nothing negative, which is wonderful. Okay, so let's pick your lifestyle. Uh, we'll go into diplomacy, because that makes sense. And yeah, I was thinking, go down diplomat. Not so bothered about family hierarchy. That's a little bit kind of a naff one. But diplomat is very good. Diplomat is good. Um, so let's go for majesty focus. I like this. You get a point of diplomacy, and you get one prestige every month. That's very good. That soon builds up. So there we go. We shall have majesty focus. Thank you very much. Um, and how near are we to getting another perk? We're not too far off. We're not too far off at all. Okay, so that's very good. Uh, right, we need to deal with the holdings. Um, why Why are we not holding all of these things? Um, okay, why have we got a two down here? What's that telling us? We've got court artifacts. Okay, have we? We've got a book. Okay, good. I'm glad we've got a book. Did we always have that book? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, he's got the same things that Biscuit had. That's okay. So he's going to get prestige up and learning lifestyle up. That's okay. Prestige up is okay. That's monthly learning lifestyle. We're not doing that. So how about we unequip that to make it not wear down quite so quick. Uh, metaphysical is prestige. And that thing is learning plus one, which is no bad thing at all. Okay. Right. So that's our kind of, that's our inventory sorted. Okay. What else have we got to do? We are losing quite a lot of money right now because I don't think we're quite as good at sort of your know, money management as dad was. So hopefully this war will end very soon. It's on plus 97%. I think when that place has been sieged, 
that will finish this war and we can stand down and then obviously you know, keep our money, which would be quite nice. Um, okay, council positions. Hang on, let's go through all these things. So let's go to the council. We've got Abram, we've got Gamza possibly, and we've got Fath. Okay, so we've got these three. That's okay. Um, and then we need to appoint a chancellor. Okay, so you look at, yeah, Vali Ghana of Jidda. You're very good and you want to be on the council. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah, let's get you on board. That will make you happy with us. And therefore, you're less likely to form factions and all that kind of complicated stuff. Okay, right. That's good. So the council is looking good. Um, decisions wise. Oh, we can commission epics. <gasps> yes. Oh, I do like doing this. I like that. We can't do it right now because they cost an absolute fortune. But I think when we save up enough money, we will be commissioning epics left, right and centre whenever we can do it because they're fun. Um, factions? No factions. Secrets? Um, don't we have secrets? No, we don't have secrets. We've got some. We've got Hook on Shake Dave. So our uncle. OK, so we've got a weak Hook on him. Okie doke. Um, and then, yeah, the court is the same, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. So our court positions are all the same. Got no prisoners. Okay, we need to sort out all of our domain holding things. So I think what we do is, I think this should be fairly simple, actually. Uh, there's four over here in Mecca, which are all good. And there's two over here in Dalak. So we need to get rid of one, two, three, four, five, six of these. My goodness me. Okay, right, so hang on. So the chappy that was down here, so Sheikh Ahmet, you... I think you should then have these holdings over here because you rule this one over here. You might as well have the ones that are nearby as well. So you have, or does that make you a bit powerful? Does that make you a little bit too powerful if you have control of all of these? Hang on, which ones form part of the duchy? So just those ones, so not Saho. So I think we give Regali to, oh, who was it again? Hang on, hang on, who was it? Hang on, let's do it this way, shall we? So you, can we grant you some titles, please? Would you like, um, not Masawa, not Burr, would you like Ed? You can have Ed, and you can have the Sheikdom of Danakil and that mosque. Okay, so you can have those, so grant you those titles. That does make you quite powerful, but that's okay. That's fine. You're over there having a fight right now. Okie doke, please don't die. Okay, now we need to get rid of... Crack his back. We go back across the world. These three. So we need to get rid of Masawa, Buri, and Saho. Okay, that's fine. Also, before I forget, we need to educate you. Um, hang on a minute. Can we not? Can we not educate you? Uh, why can't we? Hang on. Do we need to move time on like one day or something just to acknowledge that Biscuits died? There we go. Right. Can we now? There we go. Educate child. Right. We want to educate you because then we get to choose your traits and all that kind of stuff. Um, Okay, right, that's that sorted. Yeah, we need to get rid of these three places. So, I mean, who would like these? Would anybody particularly want these? Do we want to give them to somebody on the court or whatever? Hang on, what about Chappie? What about Abram? He's quite good. Oh no, but he's terrible at Marshall, isn't he? That's a bit of a shame. Um, okay, do you know what? Let's have a quick look at who we could give this to then. So I think if they all have, if they're given to the same person, so Burr would come with this little sort of mosque anyway, and then Masawa can just go to the same person, possibly. I mean, who's good at that? We're not going to give that to you, because you've already got all these other lands. Um, okay, somebody who's good at fighting. That probably isn't a good idea. Either. Somebody who's good at diplomacy, possibly. So hang on. The chappy who owns Burr. Oh, well, do you know what? Why don't you just have all of these lands? We'll just give you all of that, and then you can, you can give the city to whoever you like after that but you're very good at diplomacy you're very good at that kind of side of things um or yeah the chancellor hang on you're jid oh you're up there you've got the city up here haven't you yeah um no let's leave you on that one that's okay um yeah i think we give it to let's give it to you so if you have masawa and burr Hang on a second. So let's click on you. Let's do it this way, which makes more sense. So grant titles. So would you like Masawa and Burr? There you go. So you get both of those, which means our domain size comes down to six, which is very handy. He's going to really, really love us. And the penalty for being above our domain limit comes down. So hopefully we should see this money kind of recalculating as well. So grant those titles to that chappy. Okay. And now... 
can we just move time on the tiniest bit just to see if that does recalculate? No, it's still coming down quite a bit because we do have a lot of troops raised. And Shake Dave has inevitably, inevitably created a Liberty faction against us. Um... Okay, I and mean, we could just revoke his titles and make him go away because we do have a hook. <laughs> so we could just go, do you know what, it's fine. But no, they're not going to like that. How about we just try to sway you instead? Oh, you troublesome Uncle Shake Dave. Okay, right, there we go. First kind of problem. Um, oh, and there's all sorts of stuff going on in there. Okay, disable buildings. Uh, and that's because, yeah, hang on, because we're over the um, we're over the limit, aren't we? So yeah, when's that going to kick in? Uh, we'll re-enable next month. Okay, so can we see next month what things are going to look like in terms of money and such like? And we've won that war. Okay, that is really good for us. So hang on a second. Hang on. Where are all of our troops? Right, disband all the troops. Come back home, folks. Oh, look. We're making money again. Right, okay. <laughs> that is wonderful to see. Can we just run time on the tiniest, tiniest bit just to get all the levies and the troops topped back up? And then we can see what money we are realistically earning. There we go. It's not too shabby at all. It's not too bad. We're earning about 20. So not as much as Biscuit, but still, that's pretty good. That is pretty good going. Okay, there we go. Right, so you've, you know, you've won your first war in mere cake. Well done. That's good. Um, yeah, we now need to keep you safe. We need to keep Faddle very, very safe because he is very good at two years old. I mean, he's better than quite a lot of people in our court right now. And he's too. So yeah, I want to keep you safe. Um, but there we go. Right, so this is all yours now, Amir Cake. Let's just uh, let's go and have some fun ruling it, shall we? I think we need to take a quick look at what we actually get from all of these perks that Cake has. So let's have a quick look. So in Diplomat, we've got Thoughtful. So we gain more opinion from sending a gift. Okay, that's quite nice. We send very, very fancy kind of, you know, fancy gifts. Nice hampers, I imagine. A lovely hamper, all tied up with a nice bow and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we send very good presents. And we have defensive negotiations. So fellow vassal opinion is up by 15. Independent rulers like us a bit more. And we can propose one alliance without a marriage. Okay, that's quite good. And then over to the August tree. So we've got benevolent intent. So sway scheme power is up 30%. That's handy. We're swaying Shake Dave right now. At firm hand, monthly prestige per dread. Do we have any dread? No, we don't. So that's completely pointless right now. Inspiring rule, monthly prestige per powerful vassal on the council. Okay, I think we've only got one of those right now. We might change that round. Praetorian guard, monthly prestige per knight. That is very handy. True ruler, ah, offer vassalization acceptance plus 25. Now that's very handy. We might be using that possibly at some point. We might be able to just go and vassalize people. People that have their own individual counties, they're not part of a larger place, we might be able to go and vassalize a few people. That could be handy without fighting. That would be wonderful. Writing history means we can do the whole commission epic thing, which is going to be fabulous. A life of glory. Level of fame impact. Oh, right. So yeah, the level of fame reward we get is doubled. That's nice. Uh, Dignitas diplomacy per level of fame plus one. Very good. And August means we get Diplomacy plus two, Marshal plus one, and Prestige plus one, as we have seen. Okay, so some very good things. But yes, offer of vassalization acceptance plus 25. So for example, this place over here, I think you just own that one county. That's all you have, isn't it? You've got this one place. So can we right click on you, offer of vassalage? The, uh, the acceptance is only minus four. It's only minus four. So base reluctance of minus 45... We're not his rightful liege, minus 25. However, his opinion of us, it could be better, couldn't it? Hang on. What if we were to send you a gift? Um, oh, no, we're greedy. We're greedy. I didn't kind of look at these. I forgot about these. So we're just, we're content, and we're greedy. I kind of disagree that you should be able to have content and greedy on the same person. Because you can't be greedy and content. I assume he's greedy for money. It says very specifically there, Kate keeps a tight grip on his purse and is always looking for ways to engorge it. So, yeah, he kind of, he likes money, but everything else he's content with. And like dad, he is just. Okay, so we can't give him a gift because that goes against what we do. We're not going to part with money for that reason, even though we're very good at sending gifts. Um, okay, we need to make him like us a tiny, tiny bit more. However, we are working on Shake Dave right now which is a bit of a shame. I think that's something we could look at in the future. Possibly when Shake Davis drops his kind of, you know, his silly faction idea, maybe we could sway that chappy. And then 
offer him vassalization, he then just joins us. No fighting, no bloodshed. He just goes, yeah, do you know what? You guys are lovely. I want to be part of that. And that might work. That would be wonderful if we could do that. So there we go. That can be a plan for the future, Cake. A brewing troublemaker. Okay, this sounds fun. While I have come to expect mischief from my son and heir Faddle, his creativity keeps me on my toes. When it is not a prank, it is a brawl, a disgruntled tutor, or graze knees from an adventure gone wrong. Okay, so what are you? You are gaining the trait rowdy. Okay, so that means either martial or intrigue. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have a martial character? Did we ever have one of those in the previous run of Crusader Kings? It was sure to martial character. I can't quite remember, but there we go. That'd be wonderful. If we could have a fighty character, that would be marvellous. But there you go. Never a dull moment for now. But yeah, he's got rowdy. So martial and intrigue have crept up. He's got very, very high diplomacy. Oh yeah, because he's handsome. He gets plus two from that. And, hang on a second... Uh, we finished increasing control in Danica. Oh, wonderful. That took quite a long time, didn't it? Um, I notice that Faf here is not one of our not one of our powerful vassals. Is it worth seeing if we have anybody who's any better at fighting that would like to join? No. No, we do not in terms of that. Have we got any sneaky people? Um Nope. Nobody's good at sneaky either. And who's good at uh, who's good at stewardship? Uh oh, hang on a minute. Shake Chappie over there. The guy who looks after this. Of course, he's very good at stewardship, which means that possibly should we replace the wonderful Abram there, who's been very, very devoted to, well, not to us necessarily, but to dad, certainly. Um, do we replace him with this Chappie? Whilst we're early in our rule, I think that would make sense. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Let's replace the steward with that guy there. And also, he wants to be on the council. So if we put him onto the council, that's good. So yeah, okay, Abram's going to be a bit sad about that. And I think as well, hang on a minute, where was that thing? It was in there, wasn't it? Which one was it? Um, was it this one here, that one there? One of these, which one was it? It was one of these It gave us, there you go, monthly prestige per powerful vassal on the council, plus 5%. So I think now we've got two of them. So we're going to get an extra 10% prestige which is very, very handy. Now, again, we do want to kind of surge toward becoming illustrious with this because that means we can go to war and take duchies off people. Now, because yeah, we're back to not illustrious, we are established at the moment, and um, we have to go to war for just you know, little individual counties again, which is a little bit of a bother, but you know, it's fine, it's fine. We shall muddle through with it as best we can. And we get our first perk whilst playing as cake, which is very good. So we can take either the Ducal Conquest perk, which is okay, I think. Title creation cost down by 20%. That's never a bad thing. And we can use the Ducal Conquest Casus Bello. What's that? Uh, a Casus Bello that allows the seizure of counties required to create an uncreated title of duchy rank. Okay, so if there is an uncreated duchy title, we can then go and grab counties required to then create that title. Okay, right, that's fine. That could be handy. Adaptive traditions, uh, learn languages and foreign affairs effectiveness, or embassies, learn language scheme power, plus 75%. I was thinking of getting him to learn a language. Is it worth taking this? So the scheme power goes up 75%, and our alliances give us plus one diplomacy as well. Let's do that. Okay, so we'll do that, please. We shall have some embassies, which is nice. And then can we go and learn a language? We know Arabic and Cushitic, so we can learn some more languages. I mean, what's going to help? What's going to help? What part of the world do we want to go to? I mean, is there a languages? Uh, not really. There's court languages. That might be. Is that going to be helpful? There are many, many places. I mean, Ethiopic would seem a sensible thing to learn because they're right next door. I mean, yeah, can we go and try and learn that? That'd be handy. I don't want to adopt it as a new court language, but yeah, can we can we adopt that? Can we give it a go, please? Yeah, learn language. A 95% chance of success, and it's going to take 16 months. Um, oh no, but we're going to abandon the scheme to sway, shake, Dave. Oh, botherations. We just need more, more things available. We just need more scheme power. Um, okay, right, we'll get this done first. Let's sway shake Dave first. Hopefully then he'll stop his silly ideas of uh, of having a bit of a rebellion. And then, then we can go and learn a new language, maybe. 
Oh, and look at that. Finally, at long, long last, we have finished promoting Dalaxian over in Mecca, which is wonderful. That's taken a very long time. That's taken so many years. But there we go. We got there in the end. So if we look at that, there we go. Wonderful. So Mecca is very nice and hot pink and Dalaxian. And then, of course, Dalak is very hot pink and Dalaxian as well, which is very good. Now, we could look at promoting Dalaxian somewhere else. However, when we do that, we need to be careful where we promote it to. And this is something that comes from the comments. I was blissfully unaware of this. So thank you, commenting people. It's very helpful. Keep the comments coming. If we go and look at our researchy stuff, so our innovations, let's go and look at the one that we're working on now. So urbanization is what we're currently fascinated by. When we're doing our tech stuff, the sort of rate that it increases is a little bit dictated by the average development of Dalaxian counties which I guess sort of makes sense because, you know, development is how well developed the counties are and, you know, road structures and schools and colleges and, you know, governmental systems and all that kind of stuff. If a place is well developed, it's more likely to have more kind of, you know, maybe more schools in and more educated people and more learned people and all that kind of stuff. So the higher the development is of the counties that follow your particular culture, the quicker you can actually learn the tech stuff, which is very handy indeed. So yeah, we don't want to go and then start converting loads of undeveloped places over to our culture because, you know, it'll spread our culture and that's good, but it will bring our average down. So we're going to actually unlock things a little bit slower because, you know, overall our average kind of development has come down a bit. So we don't want to do that. So we want to make sure that we only go and convert well-developed places. Now, I think there is a development overlay, isn't there? Let's go and have a look. So Delac is on, what's Delac? Delac is 24. Mecca is very well-developed. That's 25. Uh, where's the next sort of most developed place? It looks like it might be Burr, which is only 18. That's not great. And then 14 over there. And then it's 9 and 12, 6 over in a far. My goodness me, it's terrible over there. Uh, 14 over there. Okay, maybe, maybe we don't promote our culture right now. Maybe instead we can either, we could leave you on gathering taxes. Hang on, hang on, hang on. How much is that going to change that? So 21.2 we get now because you're collecting taxes. Or we could just get you to increase development in some places. And then we can eventually turn those places over to our culture and they will help us research stuff a bit quicker. Let's do that. I mean, let's go to Burr. Let's work on that. So 13 months and that will increase the development of Burr, which has got to be a good thing. You know, overall, it's going to help us out a great deal. So there we go. It's going to take a long time. It's going to take a long time to promote our culture. But yeah, we will get there in the end. I mean, how how quick was it for us to do that thing? How long was it going to take to get urbanization? Five years. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. And cake is quite clever. Cake is quite brainy. So hopefully that's going to be OK. But yeah, OK, right. Don't hold your breath for all that kind of stuff, though. And there we go. Wonderful. Shake Dave has been swayed and he's dropped that whole silly Liberty faction thing. OK, good decision, Shake Dave. Good choice. Right. So stop that because he now likes us again. And yeah, let's go and do the language thing. Let's go and do the language thing. Um, Yeah, you. Can we please learn your language because you are next door and it sort of makes sense. So yeah, here we go. 95% chance of success and 17 months to complete it. Yeah, so let's start that scheme. Thank you very much. And I think now with that done, we will finish up for now. I think we've got, yeah, we've had a very little sort of a gentle start to Emir Cake's reign. So I think next time we'll yeah, pick things up a bit. I think it might be time to expand because we have had a couple of parts where we've not really, well, I say not really, we've not at all expanded our territory. But next time, if we could, if we could just start sort of offering vassalization to people. You're a giant. You're huge. Um, if we could start offering vassalization to people and then you know, get people on board without all of the fighting, that would be amazing. So yeah, maybe we could consider that next time. We'll have a look at doing that over here just to get one extra little easy county on board. That will be very welcome. Um, but yeah, so we'll have a look at that. And then maybe, I mean, we're going to do a, a thing of Bob, whatever it is. We're going to commission an epic. Of course we are, but we need a huge pile of money to do that. I think you need at least... 400 money to start with if not a bit more because they are really 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 expensive and they keep going on and getting more expensive so we'll save up a bit of money and do that as well and then we we'll just carry on doing what we've been doing we'll just sort of carry on which will keep an eye on the abyssinians and see if they kind of fracture in half because they've now got 
two kingdom titles and they've got two sons so that might all fall apart so that could be quite interesting uh, and then maybe we'll go to war over here maybe we'll go to war with these folks down here i do not know there's plenty of options for us to get up to next time so we'll see how we do as well as seeing how we get on with our whole sort of fancy language learning thing as well which will be very interesting but there we go plenty to do next time hopefully you are still enjoying this if you are please do leave a like that would be most marvelous indeed and also if you're not already then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in crusader kings 3 but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i will see you next time this sports car is indeed illegal you clearly couldn't see the sign saying no cars i have found the place where i'm going to live forever the tea and biscuits cafe i want to rename the dog uh, let's call it uh Wuffles. Wuffles McBark. Behold the power of the blimp.